Hello. This video is for our 395 class here at Winona State University and is going to cover some elements of scientific posters. Okay, let's go ahead and get started then. So one of the documents that will be available on the web is the Guide to Research Posters. And this just kind of lays out some of the important elements of a poster. Much of the content from that was used to create this handout is from Colin Purrington, and we'll take a look at his web page in a minute. So what is a poster? Well, a poster is a big, large piece of paper that you can use to communicate your research results, oftentimes at a conference. It is comprised of several different sections, and you should be able to allow the audience member to gather enough information about your project in under five minutes. So it's a very much a summary of your work. The benefits of a poster. It is a more personal interaction than a talk. So it's much more like a conversation than it is a lecture. If done well, the poster should attract someone who otherwise might not be interested in your field. From personal experience, in going to conferences, there's many posters that I would not have probably stopped and looked at if it wasn't for an interesting theme or an interesting title or an interesting section that they put on their poster. Also, posters should function without you there. So sometimes, again, at conferences, posters will be set up an hour or two before you actually present your information. So you want a poster to be able to stand on its own. Some of the bare essentials in a poster, you certainly want to maintain enough or sufficient white space. You want to keep your columns aligned and in a logical order and format. And also, uh, the poster should provide cues to how your readers should travel through the conversation or the story that is communicated in your poster. Here you can see the poster on the left has a four-column format. This poster on the right has a three-column format. And they've done something a little bit different with that middle column. That's certainly okay. So you can allow or get creative with your poster. You certainly don't have to keep it exactly like everybody else's poster. So what are some of the basic elements in a poster? Certainly want a title. It should convey the big idea of your work. And it's okay to be two lines long. So this one up here on the right, you can actually see is indeed two lines long. Their names are almost always pull, put right underneath the title near the top. An abstract, an abstract is often included in posters that are in like biology or chemistry. But in other disciplines, you might not need an abstract. So for example, in the posters that I create, or that we create in our discipline, rarely do we include a poster, uh, excuse me, an abstract. Should be an introduction section. Want to give the viewer interested in the question as quickly as possible. So you want to get them drawn into your poster. About 200 words or less would be optimal there. You have kind of a method section or kind of a build up or motivation to what you're going to be doing. Again, you want to try to keep these short and to the point. The results section often will have graphics that will help communicate the outcomes of your study. And you certainly want to state the main thing that is the project covered. Again, you want to try to keep these sections short, not a lot of words. If your work is very technical in nature, you might want to include an example. So that would deserve its own section in this case. The conclusion section, again, short and to the point. And then we have kind of the other sections, which would be your references and acknowledgments. A lot of people now are putting QR codes on posters. Or another thing that is common is people will actually take their poster 
and put it on a sheet of paper. So shrink it down to an eight and a half by 11 piece of sheet of paper. And then on the back of that, they will include their contact information or additional information about how to, about your poster or about your work. So that's kind of a neat idea that I kind of like because then I can take away something from the poster. So let's just go out to Colin's webpage real quickly and just look at what he has there. So this is Colin's webpage there. He has some downloadable templates, which are kind of nice to get you started. Uh, one problem with the templates is your posters will tend to look like everybody else's poster. But it's certainly nice. Gives you some structure. So you can see there's a little bit different than this one, which is a little bit different than this one. So different templates that Colin has provided here. Colin also has a little bit about what goes in each of the sections, which we just talked about. And then the another nice thing is Colin provides a nice list of do's and don'ts. And he says that the number one mistake is to make your poster too wordy. You should aim for a thousand words of, or less, and that's across the entire poster. The second most common mistake is the failure to maintain a pleasing amount of white space. So we'll look at some examples where there's clearly not enough white space on the poster. A cramped poster is hard to read, and the brain simply cannot effectively process all that information. Remember, people should be able to grasp what you're saying in five minutes or less on a poster. There's also another document that we have on the web page for you, and that's just visual tips. This is coming from this website, which I will let you look at that. It has some good information on there. Again, this is broken out in kind of the layout or the design element of your poster. There's a list of do's and don'ts here. Your headings, whenever possible, your headings should be used to summarize things. They should be hierarchical in nature. We'll see an example of one of those in a minute. Text, you wanna minimize text. You wanna use images and graphics as much as possible. Of course, you can overdo the image and graphics as well. Keep your chunks of text to 50 words or less. So again, you wanna be very precise in what you're saying. Here's some information about graphics and some even some websites that will provide additional information there. Again, try to keep your graphics very clean and simple and easy to understand. On the colors, you wanna to stick to two or three colors at most. You don't want to overload or confuse the viewer. Colors are nice to draw different sections or elements of the poster together. And then you can make posters in a variety of software packages, the most Popular would be PowerPoint or LaTeX. Okay, so let's look at some example posters quick. We'll just take a couple minutes here. So a lot of these are just examples that I have obtained from on campus here at Winona State University from different researchers. I've excluded their names there, so we don't have to worry about who they are or where they're coming from, but you'll see that some disciplines are different as we go through these. A lot of these were taken at the Judith Romali Symposium that happens every spring. So here you can see we have a three column format. We have the abstract introduction methods. The results are oftentimes in the middle. So even though it doesn't flow that way, in reading this, you probably wanna go abstract, introduction, methods, but the results here are usually in the middle just because that's the center where most people's eyes are gonna be drawn. Discussion about the graphics is down here in the results. So they just provide the graphics. They've given them titles. 
and they refer to those titles and those results in discussion section. Here's one that's a little bit more dense. It's a four column format. Over here on the left side, we can see the abstract and then a lot of other information in here. So the abstract here takes up, what is that, about 20% of the poster. Okay, this would not be something that we would do, say, in our discipline. But if this is a, a biology poster, we almost always put the abstract on there. I don't know if it needs to be 20% of the poster, but again, an abstract provides a summary of your work. So maybe by reading that abstract section, I can understand the entire poster. But it is quite dense here on the left-hand side. The reference section is also quite dense. This might be a nice place where we could provide the references on an additional sheet of paper or something. This one here really doesn't have, it has sections, but they're not necessarily aligned. And that's okay. Introduction, the hypothesis, and then you're going to jump up here to methods, results, and then discussions. So the flow of this one is a little bit awkward, but if you understand how posters are put together, you'll know how to read this. They needed this results section to be somewhat larger just because of the graphic that they're putting on here. I'm not sure what this picture is doing here, if that helps. Looks like they're talking about a fin finger prick here. I think this poster is about diabetes, so that's how people check their sugar levels. But I don't know if that's needed right there. Maybe that could go up here by the introduction. So some of these sections, again, you can see that they have a bulleted list here, okay, short sentences. It is somewhat dense, but they're not using a lot of words there. This one here, I believe, is in the social sciences. These posters look very different than what they would look like in a scientific poster. So very short, no graphics. So just understand that some posters are different in different disciplines. This one is another biology one, I believe. Objectives here, methods, a lot of graphics in the middle. They flipped over to green font on us over here, but we're not, I'm not sure why. Maybe that's because it's important, but so that's a little strange that they changed the font color on us without a lot of explanation. Another one in the sciences. Here they provided their data, which is a little unusual. When we talk about science fair posters, oftentimes individuals will put data on their science fair posters. But typically data is not included on the poster. Or if you really want to give that to the audience, again, that might be something that you would put on a piece of paper and let them take them with it, with them. The results section here is quite dense. They're not using bulleted lists. It's a little bit different format than what we saw up above. I think the bulleted lists is a little easier to read here than just drawn out paragraphs here. There's another one that doesn't include graphics. I believe this is another social science one. You can see the, the uh, hierarchical Headings here, findings, themes, alignment, okay, questionnaire. So it's obvious here that we have major themes or sections and then subsections within that with the hierarchical nature of what they were doing there. There's one that includes a map, which takes up a lot of it. Notice that the wording is quite dense. Purple background, which is kind of hard to maybe read. Another one that's very dense. Suggestions are that these sections should have no more than about 200 words in it. And the entire poster should have no more than about 1,000 words. So we're way over that on this poster. Here's a couple at the very end. There's one there that has a lot of pictures without a lot of results. So they're just showing us without a lot of graphics, excuse me. A couple of these at the end are ones that I have created or 
that we have created here at Winona State for different conferences and such. So here we used a two-column format. We didn't use any boxes around the sections. We thought that we had enough white space in here that it was obvious what a section was. The graphics are very simple, very pertinent to what we're trying to talk about. Here's another one that we created, again, for a conference. And we were asking the people to actually vote at this poster. So those dots there are different votes that people placed on the poster throughout the time that we were presenting the poster. You can see that the target here certainly grabs your attention. It's kind of the main theme of the poster. We put our additional information kind of around the side here. But this target and its voting was kind of what we really wanted to communicate in this poster. And I think it stands out. Okay, that does it then for our poster stuff for 395 class. Thank you.